back. A man who needs no introduction, but we're going to introduce him anyways, is Darwin 2.0. Darwin is a self-proclaimed creative... <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the formal introduction. Oh, okay, go. Go. Darwin is a self-proclaimed creative human that plays with... Uh, we got a typo already. Is this you Amras. trying to? Fuck? Is this you fucking with me? I don't write these. Okay, Amra's <laughs> <laughs> that plays with Amra's rides bikes and occasionally walks long distances. I do play with a lot of Amra's. <laughs> <laughs> He's been working on a film with Sawyer Products and been doing an awful lot of traveling lately. We are excited to welcome. She even gave me that part. We're excited to welcome <laughs> welcome back Darwin. Uh, first and foremost, hi Dar- Darwin. Not of Darwin hikes. We don't talk about that anymore. That's dead. Darwin hikes. What was the? No, oh, it was Darwin on the trail. Darwin on the trail. Yeah, Zach, are you even a fan? But it's still a fan. I don't do the YouTube thing. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, uh, I want to start off. Give me the story on the dead toenail. Oh, my dead toenail. Yeah. Oh god, that's been a dead toenail for like at least sixteen years. That was, was dead before I got story? into long distance hiking. Uh, actually, I used to race um, triathlon uh, semi professionally. I did that for eight years before I got into long distance hiking, um, and that died on some random triathlon i was doing at some point and it's like every time that somebody sees that there's like oh is that from all the hiking and i was like oh no that was dead way before <laughs> i did the hiking yeah. i didn't know they could die and not come back it's I've, really weird i'm in the process of losing one i just clipped it down as far as it goes with the baby one underneath i do that all but, yeah, but it mine is like she hollow yeah it's hollow Damn. isn't that gross <laughs> I, I mess with it all the time like i i tap it on stuff at home and gross my wife out. <laughs> oh, she hates it. So hot. Yeah. That's that's how I roll. Could you get like toenail reconstruction surgery? Is that a thing? Oh, maybe. Like toenail veneers? Maybe. You could find like nude nail polish. Do they make like a, like maybe a, like a toupee for your toenail? Ooh. Ooh. I like that. You could tattoo it. Get a little tattoo on your toenail. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> I like Just that. Just in here. There's options. <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to timestamp the last time that you were on. Uh, I know we had talked about you quitting YouTube. We talked a lot about outdoor evolution. Quote, unquote, quitting. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, <laughs> well, so we'll, we'll talk about some of the new content, but yeah. fill us in on what you've been up to. Do you remember the timeline? I sure do. Um, it was just before last year's Trail Days okay. because when we got to Trail it Days, was. we took that yeah. photo of the three of us and we used it for your episode promo. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. So we'll say May, April of last year. Mm-hmm. What have you been up to for the last year? Oh, my God. Um, a lot. I have done a lot of world traveling. Um, you know, after after I got done with the CDT in, uh, oh God, what was that, tw- 2021 um i decided to take like a really long hiatus from long distance hiking just to do some different stuff so over the last year i spent a lot of time um traveling and kind of doing some adventuring in other countries uh just to kind of get out of the u.s a bit you know i think you spend so long like doing through hikes and walking across the country multiple times and it's like at some point it's like well it's you know it's a great big world maybe it's time to see some other stuff so last year i spent a lot of time doing that um and then just working on a lot of other like smaller projects and things that i've i guess i've kind of put off for years because i was so like focused on always being consistent and like rev well, not relevant uh relevant on YouTube. Sorry, folks. I just got done driving 13 and a half hours to be here. Literally pulled up. <laughs> just, <laughs> for um, us. just for you guys. He's driving home tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I really spent the last year kind of trying to just do some different stuff. Um, and not really, I guess I didn't really quit YouTube. You know, I, my whole plan was like, I want to go off and do some different stuff and then come back. And if I find like there's something interesting to say or something to share or put out there then you know i I would still do that so it's been a really interesting year i've I've tried to really focus on um oh just just kind of dipping my toe in toe uh gross toe (laughs) the dead toe Uh, yeah the dead (laughs) toe that one (laughs) no other toe and all kinds of different stuff uh last year i launched a gear company um so did that, uh, started working on some documentary films. I have a media and production company, so started doing a lot of work for uh, different clients in the outdoor industry and out of the outdoor industry um, in other industri- industries. So really just um, a lot of things with AMRAs, uh, using a lot of AMRAs um, <laughs> for a year. Here. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of AMRAs. So yeah, yeah. 
a lot to pick apart there. I want to start <laughs> with the gear company. Yeah. Because this was a lot of the stuff that you'd mentioned was on my radar. The gear company thing was new to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us about. Sorry, I had it in my notes. Uh, Evolve Supply Company. Yeah. Um, so, you know, after spending, I don't know, seven, eight years, like, doing all this hiking and testing all this gear and, like, reviewing gear and talking about other people's stuff, um, it's it was kind of a long time coming. I guess for years, like, people were always like, oh, when are you going to start your own gear company? When are you going to make your own tents? When are you going to make your own backpacks? And I was like, well, I don't need to do that. Like, I like this backpack and I like this tent. And I don't know, I, I'm kind of a restless person. I like to constantly be doing something new. So over the last couple of years, I was de- kind of designing and developing a product that I've literally, and anyone listening to this has probably heard me say this a billion times in the last two years, a sun hoodie. I've been trying to develop a sun hoodie for like, I, I started doing it when I was on the CDT. I was hiking in prototypes on the CDT. Um, and then, so that was kind of something I was always going to do. We were going to like eventually come out with it release it through my media company outdoor revolution and then at some point like the conversation started with me and a friend um about just kind of starting another thing a gear company and start making multiple types of products and you know just kind of putting my spin and my all the miles and and the experience on designing and developing gear i've I've done it for I've done it for the past eight years, helping other companies develop stuff and design stuff and giving my input on things. So I was like, well, you know, I've helped a lot of other companies. Maybe it's time I kind of do my own thing and then do my own thing with other companies. So not only are we making products in-house, but we're also doing a bunch of uh, co-branding stuff Mm. um, where we're working with another cottage company to develop a piece of gear Mm. and then put that out under both brands. So, yeah. One thing I I think, especially in the past couple of years, is there's so many cottage companies coming Mm -hmm. out and having ultralight gear, right? Like there's so many different places you can get backpacks. And now since the fabric really hasn't changed too much, it's the patterns or it's the designs or it's the custom ability. What about your gear separates you from everything else? Um, Well, whenever we first started getting into it, the number one thing that I like wanted to make the focus of Evolve Supply Co. was like the reason we called it Supply Co. and didn't call it like packs or gear or, you know, blank um, was because I was like, well, I'm a really multifaceted person in outdoor stuff. Like I'm known as the backpacking hiking guy, right, from YouTube, but I do a lot of bike packing. I do a lot of uh, world travel. I do a lot of uh, photography and videography. So I'm constantly outdoors doing other things than just hiking and using tents and backpacks. So I really wanted to start a company where we didn't only develop stuff for hiking, but stuff for bikepacking, stuff for general travel, um, stuff for living out of a van, things for videographers and, and photographers, specifically outdoor videographers and photographers. Um, so that was really the focus, you know, like our first product that we put out was a backpack. Um, and then the second product that we started working on was a jacket. And the third product was a sun hoodie. And the fourth product was a camera strap. So like everything that we, we wanted to do, we wanted to develop it less for like the through hiker and the backpacker and more for kind of the all around adventurer, like someone that just, you know, is, is again, like me. And I think most people are right. Like most people that are into hiking or through hiking also enjoy climbing or enjoy, you know, fill in the blank mountain biking. Um, so that was one of the things. The other thing is all of the gear that we started designing, um, something that I've kind of always been obsessed with. If I find something that is very modular and can have multiple purposes, like that's my favorite gear. Like that's the stuff I'll, I'll keep and stick with for years. And like, anyone that's ever watched my gear videos knows that like there's certain pieces of like kit that I've never changed in like seven years. It's because I was like, well, I have this one thing that I can do five things with. Why the hell would I try something new? Mm -hmm. So that was the other focus on everything that we wanted to make. We wanted to kind of give it a modular design, um, and make it multi-purpose and multi-use. A good example is like our first product, our backpack that we came out with, we call it a 35 to 40 liter. So the pack can be a completely stripped down, kind of smaller, no hip belt, ultralight, 35 liter through hiking pack. Or you can add a bunch of, you know, bits and pieces to it, put a padded hip belt on it, roll it all the way out to a 40 liter, put a Y strap onto it. um, And you have more of kind of a fully loaded, you know, bigger through hiking pack. Or because me, like 
it always drove me nuts living out of a van for years of like, you only have so much space and I would always have to have like two or three backpacks because sometimes I'd go out and do an ultra light through hike where I only wanted a 35 liter pack. And then there's sometimes where I live in Arizona. So like I'd want to go hiking in the Grand Canyon where I'm going to have to carry like an ass ton more water, right. And a bunch more gear. So I need a bigger pack. So that is kind of like we put, I, I, I put that whole mindset into kind of everything that we started doing and then going forward was I wanted something that was very modular, multi-purpose where you only had to have like one piece of gear to accomplish multiple things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You mentioned that this wasn't necessarily designed specifically for through hiking, but is this something that would work for through hike? What? The, the, I'm assuming the pack that you're referencing. No, the, the, the Ranger is. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, kind of the whole company. The it was, yeah. It wasn't like, cause you know, there's like, uh, you know, pick your company and I don't like to ever name companies, but like, you can say it, we'll bleep it out. Oh, uh, <laughs> Z packs. Oh, fuck them. <laughs> I'm I don't even know. <laughs> um, you know, like they are, they are a backpacking company yeah. or a through hiking company, right? They don't, they don't make stuff for climbers and they don't make stuff. I didn't want to do that. That's kind of what I meant by that is I wanted to make, I didn't want to be a backpacking company. I didn't want to be a hiking company. I wanted to make stuff for everybody. But yeah, the Ranger is definitely designed as for me, if I was going to go out and like through hike the CDT again, I designed the pack that I would use for that. Yeah. Something that could be, you know, kind of taken down to its bare bones 35 liters if i'm doing kind of a faster section or if i'm doing something like hiking through the desert section where i need to really load it out with water put a y strap on it or if i'm hiking through say um, the rockies where like i would need to carry a bear can or something like that you know i can strap a bear can to it so it's it's modular in that in that aspect yeah. of it yeah what as the person that designed the pack what features are you most excited about you mentioned being able to vary the leaderage with it mm -hmm. if it's a bear canister i saw i see that the uh shoulder straps are pretty beefy tell us a little bit like about just walk us through the pack yeah itself. yeah yeah so um so even like down to like little minute things like the shoulder straps um i i designed them kind of for all the purposes i've always wanted is you know i carry a bigger camera when i hike so the beauty about the Ranger is it has removable shoulder strap pockets, which a bunch of packs do, but under the left one, um, there is a little piece of webbing that a camera clip can go onto yeah. instead of going around the full shoulder strap. So if you're somebody like me that's going to carry a bigger camera, you can add that to it, remove the shoulder pocket, because um, I've always been a person that likes having a camera on this side and a shoulder pocket on this side, yeah. or no shoulder pockets, or both shoulder pockets. Um, you know, we obviously we did the jump on the bandwagon of doing the bottom pocket because I didn't use one for years. And mm -hmm. finally, I bought a pack with it. And I was like, holy shit, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Why did I kind of turn my nose up against this for yeah. years? Um, and then other things, like I said, are just are little things added to it, like the removable Y strap. It drove me nuts for years. It's like most pack companies, probably about 90 percent of them will either they have multiple models, right? Like they'll have a, a pack if they're roll top packs mm. that has a single leash over the top hook buckle you know whatever it is or they have the pack that has a y strap to it and you kind of can't have your option well sometimes i need a y strap and sometimes i don't so we made a removable y strap that you can have a single leash and then say if you're doing a bigger carry you're coming out of town where you're carrying like you know extra food extra water well you can s put that y strap on there and then get that extra you know carrying capacity on top of it yeah. Um, really light Y strap you can just roll up throw in your ditty bag uh, so little things like that um, we made the shoulder strap super beefy because I'm a very bony person um, so that was kind of for me uh, so sorry if you don't need that um, we load lifters uh, again something that drove me nuts on like ultralight a lot of ultralight packs like 35 liter packs especially don't have load lifters I, I think that the load lifter is like one of the greatest things ever created for a pack. A lot of people listening to this will probably give me shit for that. Um, simply because I can't stand when a backpack feels like a, like a wet garbage bag hanging off your back. And you know what I mean? Like, I know if, exactly if, what you if, mean, yeah. yeah, if you've had like too much crap in your pack, yeah. especially lo like leaving a town, it just kind of feels like it's sagging off your back. Yeah. And the beauty of load lifters is you can like cinch that, you know, that load back on your back. So 
that's something that I did years ago um, when I helped another company design a pack. Hmm. We we had come out with a 35 liter pack that had load lifters, like no hip belt, but it had load lifters. Yeah. Um, simply because like it drove me nuts. Every time I wanted a small ultralight pack, it never had that option. Yeah. So it always felt like that. So it, it seems like it's the first feature to go in most minimalist packs. Yeah. Yeah. And and I don't know why. It's like a little piece of webbing and a couple buckles. Like yeah. if it's a weight thing, it doesn't really weigh much. And if you don't need it, then just let them out. Yeah. And like let the pack hang a little bit, I guess. So with so, go ahead. So <laughs> I don't know what noise that was. Polly. <laughs> 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 Damn it. Um, That's all day of traveling is what that is. All he does is clip my awkward noises and play them back in my face. So I'm used to it. You're mostly fine. innuendos. It's fine. Yeah, that I am noticing a trend there of <laughs> me not noticing in the moment. It's not great. Um, so after testing gear for so long yeah. and now creating gear, what have you learned about gear during the creation process that you didn't fully know or understand or realize during the testing parts? Hmm. Um, I mean, I've always kind of been like a, a, a bit of a gearhead, not like in the sense of like other people that are gearheads are like, I like gear and I like collecting and geeking out on it. Like I've always been a tinker. Like I'm a machinist tool and die maker by trade. I used to like work with metal and stuff. So I'm, I'm a maker by, I guess, trade. I love to kind of tweak things and make things a little bit better and adjust things. Um, so for me, I've always been that way with all gear that I've ever had, like from my first backpacking backpack, which was like an Osprey big, like 60 liter something. Like I've always altered stuff. Like I'll take stuff off, I'll stitch new things on. Um, so that's always been something I've done. So I don't know if anything's really changed with me with doing that. It's just, I did it for so many years with other company stuff. It got to the point where I think it's anybody, like you spend enough time on a trail or enough time doing anything you have something that you absolutely love, but you're like, man, if I could just change that, or if I could like have this feature on this product and this product's feature on this product. So doing the whole gear thing for me was just like, well, I really all the stuff that we do and it, it kind of goes back for a while. Like I kind of designed it for me. Like it was again, like that backpack in particular, like I designed the pack that I wanted of like, Oh shit, all those trails hiked, all those miles hiked this is what I would have wanted doing all of that. That would have been my quote unquote perfect pack. Mm. Um, but in general gear, I don't know. I think that all gear is, it, it doesn't really answer your question because I don't really know how to answer your question. Be 100%. Okay. I didn't know if there was something um, like you might've learned, like making it in production or like, you know, with it's way harder than a lot of people or, think. Yeah. I didn't know if there's anything <laughs> like that, but there might not be. No, like, you know, even as I was mentioning, like the sun hoodie and kind of this running joke, that's been this stupid ass sun hoodie for like three years is it is way harder than it seems to like make something. Cause you know, whenever we went to do the sun hoodie, which is what ended up turning into an entire gear company, my search for just wanting this like perfect hiking top that I'd kind of been thinking about for years. Um, that eventually turned into an entire damn company. Um, you know, we wanted to do it U S manufactured. We wanted to do it out of a natural material. Like there were all these little steps I wanted to do. And I found out over three years that it's really damn hard to do all of these things. Um, so yeah, it's been interesting. It's funny that the gear company is based on the sun hoodie. Cause I didn't see that. On no, the store. <laughs> no, cause it's still in development. Okay. Damn it. So, I'd but be, in my car, you've got a prototype. I have a prototype that nobody can see, but I also have the final fabrics. Like that's been the biggest challenge for us was finding kind of the perfect fabric, the yeah. perfect weight and stretch and performance and stuff like that. Um, are you just finding a company that produces that fabric within the U.S. or are you like making the fabric? No, the we're not making Are you fabric. growing the sheep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea how this shit works. You know, like <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people that listen have no idea how this yeah. shit works either. For sure, for sure. <laughs> no, as far as I, I, th I think the only company that like actually makes their fabric is, is, uh, is app gear. Um, but no, no, we're not doing anything like that. We're just, you know, like pretty much everybody, I mean, there's, I don't think there's really any that's that's called like what I've learned over the last year that's called being vertical like you make the thing from a raw material then you turn it into a product then you sell said product that's being vertical I, I think out of like a hundred companies I think there might be one company that's like vertical yeah 
Um, it seems pretty so inefficient. Most, as yeah, well. yeah. So most people source their products or their materials from somebody else. Is there a concern of someone finding who you're sourcing it from, getting that same material and making it? Yeah, how do off? we steal your business model? <laughs> I don't, the, Just to ask. Again, these are reasonable I'm, questions. I'm not making fun of you. Zach's on a mission this weekend to try. He said this in the grocery store. My goal is to make Chaunt snap. It's oh, been nice. Three hours since we've landed. Nice. How many podcasts are you guys doing? Uh, well, we're on like Total? 204 at this This is point. number one. <laughs> I'm going to uh, smother him with a pillow in his sleep. I, I was going to take a bet on like when, like, how many podcasts you guys are going to do this oh, weekend? Yeah. I uh, think we're what probably number it'll be or four, you snap. And Chance will be at one. I'm going to hold it together real well just to fuck with him. <laughs> I believe in you. Internally? I believe in you. Snapping. How long you guys work together? Five years. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got this. Yeah. You got this. You're good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> We're Stay having strong. fun. We're having fun. Just pals, <laughs> joshing. Just pals having fun. Just wait till I'm crying outside of your room at 3 a.m. But, you, you know, in, in answer to your question, um, most all these materials are pretty, like, readily available to everyone. It's really just kind of finding what works for you. And if you really look at, like, the gear industry, um, most people are using the same fabrics. Most people are using uh, the same designs. Like, it's something that I, I find so funny whenever, like, we came out with our pack, like, I'll, I'll kind of talk shit for a little bit. Whenever we first came out with our back, I, I've read a couple of things like, oh, it looks like everybody else's pack. It's like, it's a fucking backpack. Yeah, what is yeah, it yeah. supposed to look like? Yeah, it's right. got straps and it's got a roll top. And so, um, you know, I, I think where it comes down to is like, yeah, all these pieces of gear kind of use a lot of the same materials. They look pretty similar to a point. But I think what it really comes down to is these little minute things that most people will never notice like our pack um you know not to like talk high praise about it or whatever i always tell people like oh if you want to see what makes our pack different like turn it inside out like there's a lot of little things on the inside of that pack that we designed that are very specific to the design of it and like how we went about the seams and the taping and the binding and all stuff like that so i think like products um nothing really stops any company from kind of using the same thing unless you're just some amazing company that like has found something unique and patented it and paid an ass ton of money to keep it exclusive, which I don't think anybody's doing. Um, not really anything. I, I think anybody can really start. And that's kind of the beauty of like cottage companies in the cottage industry is like anybody can do that. It's like, if you know how to sew, if you know how to design, um, you can go out and, you know, pick your random fabric dealer, uh, a rep stop by the roll or challenge sale cloth or any of these people get your material and kind of start designing. But I think what separates a lot of companies and what makes one maybe not better because everybody's making great stuff and gear is, I've said this for years and I'll say it again over and over and over again. It's so subjective. Like there's no bad backpack. There's no bad tent. There's no bad shoe. It's like, what works for you? Well, that's the perfect thing for you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what somebody else said. Um, But yeah, it's really cool that, anybody that kind of has a design in mind or if you're like me has has used stuff for so many miles and spent so much of your time using crap and like learning what works for you what doesn't you know you can buy some fabric you can get a sewing machine you can learn a pretty simple trade and and boom you can like start making stuff um that being said i'm not running any sewing machine so it's not (laughs) me sewing it don't worry folks (laughs) i'm not a great sewer I definitely want to talk about the international travels, but before we move on from the gear thing, I want to hear more about the sun hoodie because this is something that I <laughs> think I've struggled with too. You're in the presence of two gingers. Yeah, uh, exactly. We are yeah. interested. You guys are like my target audience. Yeah, yeah. We, we literally are. This couch is your target yeah. audience. I'm, I'm getting skin cancer surgery in a week, so sun hoodie talk. Damn. <laughs> um, I think I got a little bit actually going around on my with nose. all the time you spend outside, I'd be, yeah. it's a, we're all doomed at some point. Yeah, we are all doomed. So you mentioned a natural fabric. Are you able to disclose what you're making your sun hoodie out of? No. Okay. Not uh, yet. Uh, so I can tell you that the sun hoodie has went through so many iterations. I've literally had like 15 different ones at this point, different designs, different fabrics. We we, we tried synthetic for a while with some synthetic stuff. I wasn't really happy with it. Um, you know, my biggest beef with synthetic stuff over the, you know, over years is, you know, you spend enough time on trail wearing something. It's like you never get that stench out of yeah. it. Yeah, smells like hell. Yeah, it's awful. So the great thing about like you know materials like uh, 
merino or alpaca or all these natural materials is like a lot of them bamboo um is like antimicrobial so they don't get that smell on them. so that was one two most of that like natural fabrics perform really well um that's just me using other people's stuff over mm-hmm. years um so we went with a natural fabric on it but i can tell you that the product ended up being uh it was gonna it was gonna be a thing i was gonna make and just be like hey here's darwin's sun hoodie to it's a product that outdoor revolution is going to release to it's now a gear company and the gear company is going to release it to now it is a co-brand between me and another company that are doing it because at the end of the day that ended up being the easiest way for me to do it Mm because you would not believe how insanely difficult it is to get people to sew apparel in this country Hmm. um, and do it efficiently uh, where it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Right. Um, So yeah, so that is what I can say about it. And what? it comes in three beautiful colors, and none of them are black. And I, I say that as a joke to anyone that's listening, because like for the last three years, two years, I always wear a black sun hoodie, because all of my, our prototypes are always black. Yeah, Merino is typically like black. Mm-hmm. A lot of natural fabrics are. Um, or it's like the most common, or the cheapest mm-hmm. material to use. So everyone's always like, oh, it's going to be a black sun hoodie. Oh, it's going to it's not going to be black yeah (laughs) so what colors are they what colors yeah is that a surprise too no i guess not what colors colors i was going to tease it on instagram what colors aren't they (laughs) (laughs) uh well uh, black flesh um (laughs) magenta uh, licorice okay we're narrowing it down uh marigold yeah just start random (laughs) random colors um no, it, we're going to be doing like a an earth tone. Uh, anyone that's like looked at our stuff and has been following us knows that like we use a lot of ranger greens, uh, like olives and, and stuff like that, browns. So we're going to have like an earth tone, like an olive. Um, something a little brighter, probably a blue, because blue, pretty much everybody digs blue yeah. uh, when it comes to outdoor stuff. And probably something kind of like right in the middle of the road, like a heather gray or something that's not quite white because I can't stand white gear personally hate it uh and not black because everyone would lose their mind if it was a black sun hoodie so i personally like black ones <laughs> but um that's an argument i've been having with people for years uh because so yeah, the perception of black under the direct sun being yes. hotter and yep yeah i don't even know i feel like i've heard both sides of the equation what's the truth <sighs> I don't, I, get, I, don't, yeah, I don't know if I want to get into <laughs> we don't that. We have enough time Do for it. this. This has been an argument that I've had for years with people. Um, all I can say is it works for me. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Like what the truth is or not, like whatever. Yeah. I've, I've done a lot of hiking in the sure. desert for many years. It's like you're saying about gear. Hoodies. Like there's no right or wrong. It's, there's no right or wrong. Yeah. What works for you? Black sun hoodies have typically worked for me. So that's typically what I wear. But no black sun hoodies. So, Sweet. Yeah. Uh, so you've been up to a lot of travel. I, obviously we want to talk about the, yeah. uh, documentary project. Yeah. You worked with Sawyer and Jennifer Davis and Brew was, was part of this yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. Brew and the kids. Okay. The whole fam. Yeah, The whole fam. Give us the full rundown. Cause I don't think we have too much info about this project <laughs> at all. So last year, uh, myself and, um, my kind of right hand man, uh, Jonathan Davis went to, uh, Fiji with Jennifer Farr Davis, brew her husband and her two kids, um, Charlie and Gus. And basically Sawyer wanted to, had been talking about for a while, sending Jen somewhere to do a project, um, something. And they got a hold of me and we're like, Hey, are you interested in going to do this project? And I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? And they're like, I don't know, film it, make something out of it. And I was like, all right, that's cool. So, um, yeah, so we went with them in, God, when was that? June? June, I think. Uh, Mid-June. It was like right after trail days last year. Mm. Uh, Went over there with them. Maybe it was July. June or July. um, To be determined. And we went over and, and basically got immersed in a project that they have actually been working on. It's really interesting because... And Sawyer I didn't know or this. the Davis family? Uh, Sawyer. Okay. Um, so Sawyer has actually been working in Fiji for the past 15 years, um, kind of under the radar. Like most people don't know that about Sawyer. And they've really over the last year kind of stepped up um, being a little more public about it. But 
the thing that most people don't know, and I don't, Travis would probably kick me for saying this because, <laughs> well, it's funny because they're so insanely humble. Like, and anybody that knows like me and has watched my videos over the years knows I don't like really give a lot of high praise to companies because I, I've never like messed with sponsorships or stuff like that. But like straight up, honestly, out of all the companies I've ever dealt with, all the people I've ever met, like Sawyer is one of the the most amazing companies and and people I've ever met. Um, because again, like I had used Sawyer filters and permethrin and sunscreen and stuff like that for years. Um, but had no clue that like for the past 15 years, they have been in multiple countries around the world installing, uh, bucket filter systems to basically bring clean water from border to border in countries where people are, you know, dying of waterborne illnesses. Uh, so whenever they kind of contacted me last year that, you know, they asked if I was interested in doing a project to film, I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, what do you want to do? And they're like, where do you want to go? And I had pitched a couple ideas and then they're like, well, what about Fiji? And I was like, Fiji, why would he go to Fiji for water? Like, don't they have like the weird little square bottles of water that you pay too much for? And <laughs> be amazing if you went over there store. they're all drinking out of Fiji water bottles. They are. Are they really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It's, I mean, it's a really popular water yeah. over there, uh, mainly for tourists and stuff like that. But, you know, I was kind of on the fence. I'll be 100% honest. And I've talked to Travis about this multiple times. I was kind of on the fence about it because they're like, well, we want to send you to Fiji with Jennifer Farr Davis and her family, and we want you to document what they experience. And I was like, all right, Fiji? Like, when I think of Fiji, I think of, like, surf competitions, the beach, resorts, and, again, the goofy bottled water. Uh, not the case. Uh, Fiji is a very interesting country because the Fiji that most people think of and see and hear about is the resorts, is the tourism. But the truth is, about 90% of that country is nothing like that. Very rural. Um, you know, a lot of poverty in, in Fiji. It's a very poor country. So obviously, like, they need the tourism to bring in money for the country. But the truth is, most people in that country, and I think the percentages, I should know this because I've been working on a film about it, um, when they first got there 15 years ago, I think less than 60% of the country had access to clean water. Hmm. So, like, you know, people were getting all types of diseases, waterborne illnesses, people dying. Um, and there was an amazing small organization that had started a little foundation called Give Clean Water that was going over there and starting to do kind of missionary work and, and going into these villages and helping people. And they were like using a couple of different water filters here and there. And then the guy that started it stumbled upon the Sawyer squeeze filter, right? Like probably from a Walmart or something like that, which, you know, was made for like backpacking and hiking and stuff. And like, Oh shit, this is perfect. It's small. We can hook it up to some sort of tube, put it on a, on a system. They're really cheap. Um, so started that kind of got the ball rolling. Sawyer stepped in and started donating a ton. And the interesting thing, and again, they're really humble about this. So Travis would probably kick me about this is they donate 90% of their profits to like these clean water projects, which is mind blowing to me. Yeah. And no some companies come in close. Oh not God. At no. my radar at least. No, yeah. no. Um, and it, that blew my mind and it, it really made me want to like work with them more. And it's kind of funny cause like for the past handful of years, I have not used a Sawyer filter. I used a <laughs> catadine filter. Me and Travis joke about that all the time. Um, but, you know, such an amazing company. A couple of years ago, I started a campaign with, with my uh, company, my media company called Hashtag Give a Shit, where we were basically asking companies to kind of step up and give back to public lands, like a, a small percentage. And, you know, whatever it was, even going out and like helping their local trail association, stepping up and just helping to give back. Um, so like whenever I started having that conversation with Sawyer, it kind of like fit right into like what I'm all about, which is like companies or people that have a platform. Like I've always thought that like, well, if you, if you have a platform or if you're like a big company, like a multi-million or billion dollar company, not saying that's what Sawyer is, but you know, you kind of have a little bit of a responsibility to take care of the thing that you're making all this money off of. And here you got this company that's like, donating 90% of their profits again, which is mind blowing to me every time I say it 
or like when I'm editing the film and like there's parts in the film where you, you keep know, fact checking stated. it. Like, is that a nine? That's a nine, like, right? 90. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, so yeah, so we went over there, um, and just had an amazing experience. Uh, the, the far Davis family, you know, obviously was, was in the villages. We went to three different villages over a series of days. Um, one was deep kind of in the middle of the country, really in the jungle, in the bush as it were. Um, another one was out on an island. So we took a small boat out to an island. And then the third, uh, village that we went to, we went to a small village, um, that was up this really long snaking river that we kind of took like one of these long banana boats to. And the, the significance of that one was that was them actually, um, uh, finishing and wrapping up an entire province of Fiji. So at that point they had basically brought like 15 years of work was like paying off to where they brought clean water to an entire province of that island, which is mind blowing. Is that the one that they made that Instagram post about where it was like the dots on the map of like where it was years ago? This could be a completely different place that Maybe. they're donating yeah, to. Yeah, well that's the thing. You know? is like like they're working in know. so many countries. They had this one Instagram post and it was yeah. a time lapse of a map of I can't remember what place and it was a few dots at first for where their bucket filters were and over time it just started to just be covered in yeah. the dots. And I saw that and I was thinking about this and it's crazy what they're doing with it, all of it that. It really is. And it, it's amazing. And it like, you know, again, for me, I'm, I'm like working with these other companies like, you know, years ago, like being like, you should give back like 2% to this trail and care, give a shit and like waving my fist in the air. And, and then you got this company that like, that I've kind of known and, and worked with here and there and like chatted back and forth with. It's like doing all this work and I'm like, holy crap. And then on a global scale, like, not only just like, you know, national scenic trails and, and, and public lands and stuff, but around the world and literally saving lives, not just like, you know, saving a trail and saving, you know, the things that we should save. And I'm not like downplaying that at all. Um, but like literally saving lives around the world, which is, yeah, it's, it's absolutely incredible. So it's, it's been a pretty, pretty awesome time. I mean, we had a great time over there. They did make us, uh, you know, me, whenever I travel, I want to be like dropped down in the most, cause whenever they first pitched Fiji, I was like, Fiji, like, no, no, no. Drop me down. Like in the middle somewhere, like in South America, like in the most remote place that you can possibly, like, that's what I want to go document. Mm. And when they said Fiji, I was like, I don't want to go to Fiji, but it ended up being like super amazing, amazing cultural experience. The people there are so nice. Last year I went to five different countries this year, three so far. I've never met nicer people in the entire world than the people who live in Fiji. Hmm. They're, they're just so beautiful and so kind. And when you're doing this project, is your role behind the camera or is it like the Davis family and Uncle D doing all this stuff? <laughs> Uncle D. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for a new trail name. I'm gonna stop talking to Jen's family if they start calling me Uncle D. <laughs> um, like no, no, name. definitely behind the camera. <laughs> okay. Yeah, There might be a one little bitty shot of me holding a camera in a boat that's in the film and that's it like a like, bigfoot sighting yeah cool <laughs> so no it, it was definitely documenting which you know has definitely had its own challenges for years you know i've spent so much time documenting me or documenting things that i know a lot about and from my perspective but documenting something from someone someone else's perspective without any input from myself and then turning that into a storyline and you know developing that into a narrative really hard <laughs> how much notes are you providing to the davis family in terms of like okay we're gonna set the scene over like oh, are none. you no 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 you're not acting as like the director and trying to like build not really the story? i mean you know it, it really like all direction and stuff like that comes from me and like my guy so it was me and and a guy that works for me uh that went over to document it so we it was just us and two cameras um obviously audio equipment stuff like that but no, not really. Like when you're doing something like that and it becomes a challenge again, because you don't have, like when you're documenting something like that, you're just documenting it and you don't know like, well, what the hell will happen? Like, I don't know, this could be boring as hell and nothing could happen. We could just sit here all day and you know, everybody stares at each other and that's what you got. Like mm -hmm. that's the documenter. Um, so it was more of just kind of being there when you're documenting something like that, 
it's just re- it, it's it's a lot of work mentally because you're like, well, I got to capture everything, and oh, there's something organic happening, so I need to be there and I need to be documenting it. So no, no real direction. Really, the only direction was between me and my other camera guy who were really talking of like, you know, we have an idea like, oh, today, you know, we know what the the brief is for the day. Like we're going to go to this island and we're going to check on the health of these villagers that filters were installed two weeks ago, like a Mm -hmm. checkup. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, well, what are we going to get today? Well, we need to get the boat ride and then we need to, you know, get maybe Jen talking to somebody in the village and we need to get this, we need to get this. So there's that direction, but then when you're there and it all goes out the window, it's like, well, never mind. Hmm. So what is Jen and her family's role in this? Like, are they going and giving them the buckets? Are they, like you said, checking on them? What are they doing in this film? Um, so, I mean, it, it's it was interesting, you know, kind of what they were doing is they were really going, I think what Sawyer really wanted um, was to kind of just give them an experience and and let them, especially like with the kids, let them see people, um, you know, living in a different way, um, a different culture, uh, you know, people discovering access to clean water for the first time. So pretty much every day that we went, the family was really, you know, helping to install the filters because they do have a small team over there. It's a team of four guys um, that have been working in Fiji for the past 15 years that were part of the original crew. They're kind of the on, you know, the the boots on the ground team that goes into these villages with the buckets, with the filter systems. They build the buckets, um, you know, attach the tube. I'm sure anyone that used a Sawyer filter have seen like how it can be a gravity filter. And then they instruct the the people in the village on how to use it, how to fill it up, how to clean the filter, what it's going to do. You know, they show them, and it's mind blowing and. Like, not to give too much of the film. I mean, yeah, I'm not giving anything away. <laughs> it's obvious. Um, you know, when someone has been drinking dirty water their entire life, you know, like every hiker knows what dirty water looks like and then what it looks like when it comes out of the filter, unless it has like tannins or something in it. Um, but to be there and like to literally see people instructing and talking to the, the villagers in, uh, you know, Fijian. And telling them like this is this is the water that you're used to, that came out of that pipe, and this is the water after it's gone through the filter, and like just it, like something that simple, where like they're holding up a glass of dirty water and a glass of clean water, you realize like how much you actually take for granted because the look on people's faces of seeing clean water for the first time, and then understanding that like by drinking this, you're not gonna get sick anymore. You know, you're not gonna. You're not going to have a runny stomach. You're not going to have diarrhea. You're not going to have all this stuff by this one little simple little piece of plastic, you know, not to downplay it, but like a piece of plastic with a label on it, hook it up to this, run water through it, and you're going to be healthier. Um, it, it was it was pretty amazing um, to be there and to have that experience. So we were really documenting the family um, really having an experience and and. and not only helping to install the filters, but also just connecting with people, um, trying to make connection and, you know, relating to people in need. So, yeah. Are the uh, residents of Fiji, is it Fijian people? I don't even know what the correct (laughs) nomenclature there is. I think it's Fijian. Fijian? Yeah. Are the Fijians, it just feels weird to say, I don't know why. (laughs) Are they cognizant of the fact that this is Sawyer doing the work or do they just know that like some American company is coming in? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they 100% know like Sawyer, the brand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more of like the people that are there, you know, helping to install it and bringing them access to clean water. Um, So I think it's less... It's less like uh, like how you and I would think, like seeing something and being like, oh, it's that brand's thing. I don't yeah. think that's really... They're not putting up big Sawyer billboards <laughs> no. in the rural areas <laughs> no. of Fiji. No, yeah. it's it's very low-key and it's very real. And like that's what I really appreciated about it. Um, like I said, we, we had those three days. We landed. It, it was a quick trip. I mean, we landed. We went from one side of the island. Like we landed in Nandi, went to Suva, uh, drove the Coral Coast to Suva, got up that first morning and went out and started work in one of the villages. Spent three days going to the villages, and then Travis, damn him, 
made us go the, the last day made us go to a resort island just to make us experience it it was to me like sorry travis it was the worst part of the trip <laughs> i hated it i hated it so much everybody else had a great time like yeah. everyone's like you know having drinks and like partying on the beach like yeah. you could snorkel and go out like in a little submarine oh, that and, sounds terrible and shit like that <laughs> for me it was pouting. awful yeah, because yeah, yeah. i was like you know we just got done with this like great cultural experience yeah, of sure. really connecting with people and, and seeing these beautiful people and, and and relating to them and you know they, they shared food with us and we had uh, kava ceremonies, which is a ceremonial thing there. Um, and then to like be plucked out of that and then like dropped into like the most white touristy thing. Yeah. But it was nice because we got to see the stark contrast of what most people think of that country, which is resorts and, you know, snorkeling and, and paddle boarding and stuff like that. And like, that's not that country at all. It's a very, very, very small section of that country. Yeah. So were you taking videos at the resort too, so that in the documentary oh, yeah. you can juxtapose the two oh, together? Yeah. yeah. Like a cool. fat white guy eating lobster <laughs> and <laughs> some baby swimming through like shit water or something. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, anybody that sees the film, like that, that's how the film starts out with. Like, here's what you think of Fiji, but here's the real Fiji, basically. That's what we wanted to show in the film and just make people aware of it. The film also very much like follows Jen and, and, and her family and, and who they are and like her background and, and, kind of how that ties into everything so yeah <clears throat> so obviously the I hope film I did a good job yeah no I'm, <laughs> yeah, my, my I, interest I is peaked <laughs> and I, no surprise I promise here. nothing it could be terrible folks yeah yeah I'm mean, just to reiterate everything that you said like obviously Sawyer is a title sponsor for us there, it's the reason that we're oh, out it? here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay I didn't know that <laughs> it's good it's good that you didn't know that no, no they, I'm telling you they are the most like humbled company yeah. they're just well, like I've known Travis for a while and that's why I love working with them it's like they're excellent people they're phenomenal and, people yeah and I shared your response when I learned about the 90% profit going back to the clean water initiatives because that's mind-blowing no company is doing that like patagonia which is the biggest the most revered like conservation brand i don't know what the percentage is but i guarantee you it's not 90 Mm percent um i forgot where i was even going with this oh where was it so the film the film is premiering shut up siri (laughs) Uh, the film is premiering for us tomorrow at trail days uh people are going to hear this after saturday 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 people won't hear this until after trail days regardless uh that being said is the film publicly available yeah so the plan with it is like what we're showing at trail days is i'm I'm gonna i'm telling everybody it's kind of like it's an early release of it of like you know there's there's still we're gonna end up releasing it online Uh, me and travis are still talking kind of back and forth of kind of how they want to do it Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean the original the the final plan i guess i should say is to put it on youtube um so everybody can you know can see it and 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 get to you know understand that story and, and see what they've been doing not really what they've been doing um because i think that you know even though we're sitting here and like we're talking about how great sawyer is and they very much want to stay humbled like that like mm-hmm. that was kind of one of their biggest things and it was like we don't don't tell a story about us and i was like oh, okay <laughs> and they're like tell a story about Jin and tell a story about fiji and yeah. i was like all right but you like you guys like no don't talk about us. And I'm like, don't you guys think that you should be talking about what you're doing? And they're like, yeah, but we don't want it to seem like, you know, we don't want to use that to help promote us. And and like, so it's, it's amazing that like out of again, and I'm not going to say any names or throw any names under the bus, but as many companies and many people I know in the industry, like that is no one's mindset of like, no, 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 don't talk about us. Like we're good. Yeah. 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 Just tell this story because it's what we believe in and, and it's what we're passionate about. Not because we're just trying to sell more stuff. Yeah. It's consistent with, Travis's character, yeah. like we're gonna get him on this podcast. He's gonna be so uncomfortable. Oh, gonna it's, it's gonna be oh, very. Have you guys fun. listened to the episode I did with him? Oh no, no, before no. we went to Fiji. Yeah. Oh, you should listen to it. Any so, any tips for us when we get him in yeah, the hot exactly. seat? Oh, he's great. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Travis he's really. Great. Yeah. I always oh, enjoy yeah. talking to him, like learning about the the bug murder and chemicals and all that, because like, <laughs> he's he's a wealth of knowledge. He's but, gonna yeah. love the ad we did in the segments for this. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, no, but honestly, like if we're in the topic of pumping their tires, I didn't even. Know they did the bucket filters until a few years back like again just like most hikers probably i thought it was just the hiking filters yeah and the reason i ended up learning about all that they're doing with the bucket filters is 
they ended up reaching out because they were doing over the summer having hikers come and help them just even respond to customer service emails for a week one week come in answer customer service emails super simple take a rundown on the frequently asked questions and it, the whole point of it was to get as many hikers in week after week so that they could give us some funding to go yeah. and hike with. Like yeah. even in that aspect of things, them trying to provide for hikers yeah. by filling something that could have just been like a role that they had plugged in. They didn't have to do that. No. And then you see they do all this stuff with the bucket filters. And even then they're still kind of hush hush about it because they're like it's crazy. on the down low. You know, the Sawyer squeeze, that stuff like that's the through hiking stuff is not even what we focus on. Yeah. Yeah. And we're out here hiking. We yeah. have no idea. Yeah. And as you, know? as you learn more about that company and like the efforts that they mm-hmm. actually put towards other things, it's, it, it's funny. I, I think that last year, you know, they finally started coming around to it about like, oh, we should start sharing. And I think it's because so many people that work with them were like, you really <laughs> need to talk about this. And like, but we don't want to. And it's like, I think you really need to, cause you're doing something really great. And like, you don't have to like toot your own horn by saying it. But like just by letting people know, like other people, like you could that can inspire other people and other companies to also do things like save lives, like and and help out people and 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 then you know help towards causes that 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 need attention. Um, so it's it's been nice for me, you know, having the conversation over a year ago when I started the conversation with them about what they wanted to do. And what they were thinking about doing over the year to now, like I've seen that they've added like, you know, all this stuff onto their website. They're starting to share more of it. And they're having, I know they're sending some other people to some countries to have them work in other countries. Um, you know, they, they have the, the Sawyer Foundation, which is their, their website that now they've kind of made a little bit more public. So a lot of people are being able to donate to that, which is really great, which, you know, then in return helps put a filter in somebody's house and, and save you know, basically changed their entire life um, for, I mean, how much is a Sawyer filter? Not much. 30 some bucks. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, I just trip, bought but one. I have to get a new one. Because <laughs> I started feeling like, I'll be 100% like honest, I kind of started like all the work that I've done with them over the past year, I kind of started feeling bad. I'm like, I should start using a Sawyer filter again. <laughs> so so I, went, so I went out and, 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 and bought, you know, a, 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 I have tons of Sawyer filters and have for years, but there's one in particular that I kind of, shunned a couple years ago and i'm like no i'm gonna give it another run i'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out again so <laughs> i went the mini? another one huh is it the mini not the mini the micro okay i like the micro what didn't you, you like, do about like the it? micro well, i don't want to say it now we're talking <laughs> <good things. laughs> but, but no it's good i'm, I'm testing it i'm, I'm back it's to testing too it. easy to use <laughs> that's what it is it's <laughs> way too easy to use and i was like the water tastes too it. clean like, it's just it's too clean i need i need just a little crappier water so my, that's why i started I need using my shits different. to be a little runnier <laughs> <laughs> needed to relate to the people that I was making a film on. So I planned this years ago. I made the transition. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You mentioned your interview with Travis. That's the outdoor evolution podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, with all that you're doing, I have trouble working in doing this podcast with my schedule and I work my schedule largely around the podcast. Yeah. How do you manage to make it work? Cause you sound like you're busier in a wider variety of ways than I am. Yeah. Um, insanity is a word that comes to mind um i'm a very i think that's just kind of part of who i am i'm I'm a very restless person always have been um so i mean even back whenever i was like doing youtube full-time like i was still putting out like a video a week or two videos a week and i i mean i've had the media company since late 2018 still doing that still like putting in all the miles on the trail every year still doing all these other things and then i've been married for 16 years so wife family at home not family at home i don't have kids i'm not like you man um, no kids <laughs> thank um, your lucky stars <laughs> um so I, I don't know i'm i'm just that's just how i'm wired I'm, I'm from indiana i'm from southern indiana i'm from the midwest anybody that's from that area is probably the same way oh, outside, you're outside of chicago oh, okay right yeah. on yeah. yeah there's some like i don't know there's some southern indiana midwest chip on my shoulder of like always having to do more and more and more and more but i'll be honest i'm starting to kind of wear out a little bit yes <laughs> so it's it's been a lot on my plate over the last year I, I like to throw a lot of things at the wall and kind of see what sticks and that one again one of the reasons i kind of stepped away from youtube for a while was i was just like well my world has been all about this through hiking and making videos and being you know darwin 
that I'm kind of neglecting all these other things that I want to try um, and and dive a little more into. I'm, I like to I like to learn a lot. I'm, I'm I like to learn as like many trades as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that's how I do it. I just I like to just go full steam ahead. I'm I'm restless. I guess I don't know. So we have a fun game we like to play on this podcast. Ooh. It's called Fuck Mary Kill. Okay. <laughs> and I would okay. like. Do you know the game? I don't. Okay. Well, this is great then. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, I give you three options. Fuck you pick Mary one that you want to fuck, one that you want to marry, and one that you want to kill. Oh, that's totally not. Okay. Um, that's totally so, not what the sentence <laughs> I thought you said was. <laughs> Never oh, mind. okay. What do you think I said? I just dirty. thought that was a sentence. I didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know there was a period after each yeah, one. I was like, well, like, "That's a, a weird." Semicolon. You gotta fuck Mary and then kill her. That's yeah. a weird name of a game. But all right. <laughs> well, so the three things I'm gonna give you are okay. through hiking, your media company, and your gear company. Ooh, fuck spicy, Mary kill. Spicy chance. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> eating. <laughs> Polly, don't. <laughs> fuck Mary kill gear company through hiking, and the media company. Damn. I'm gonna have to go with. I'm I'm really into the gear company right now, so I'll marry the gear company. Okay. Um. Fuck in a bad way or in a good way? No, like sexual. Fucking's yeah. always a good Let's thing. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. So it's but sensual. Like, but like a yeah. one and done. It's sensual. Like a, yeah. like a one I, and done. I, like I don't, well, I don't do anything. One I don't want to marry you. But a one I'll night fuck stand. You. A one night stand. One night stand. It doesn't even have to be one night, but you just you don't like them enough to marry them. Just enough to fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> At least knows. I guess the media company. Oh, so you're gonna kill through hiking for right now, yeah. Okay. I've so done. I've done enough of it over the. Something. <laughs> Once it's dead, it's dead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Happy trail days, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like ending on a sour note? Is no, that, I think that's great. That's no? a good note. Yeah. Who likes through hiking anyway? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it wears on you. Yeah. To that point, it is getting late. We're uh, monopolizing your time. Um, what else is going on this year or projects that you're excited about that you want the good people to know? Oh, God. Um, I'm doing a handful of things. I'm I'm doing some more traveling. Uh, like I said, last year I went to like five different countries and, and got a lot of different cultures. Uh, this year I'm going to be going to do the Tour de Mont Blanc. Um, Number with, one of my uh, international bucket lists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same. Um, I'm actually guiding a uh, – I'm a creative guide. I like to quote that. Um, I'm not a guide. I'm not a certified guide, so do not take that as what I said. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with a bunch of people and do the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, so that's going to be really fun. Um, doing PCT days as well this year uh, with the gear company. Focused a lot really this year on the gear company. And then again, just traveling a lot for the sake of travel. Um, for me, you know, not to like drag this on too long, but I remember I was recently talking to somebody about this. I think I talked about it on a podcast for years, and you guys might relate to this. Um, you know, when you do your first through hike, and we're here in Damascus, so like the, the AT was my first love, right? Same. The the first one, none of them are ever like the first one. Chasing the dragon. Chasing the dragon, right? Um, and it, I, I, I wondered what it was about that for years. Like, why, why, why is it that first one? It doesn't matter what through hike you do. Like, some people do, you know, the the PCT first, and that's like they'll come do the AT and be like, eh, it was all right, but it was no PCT, and I wondered what it was about that for years. Like why, when I came out here and I see a white blaze or I drive into Damascus and come down, you know, main street, why there's just like this energy and this magic that fills me up again. It makes me feel like the first time. And it took me a long time to figure it out. And then over the last year, um, I kind of finally put my finger on it. And it was the fact that when you go to do your first through hike, you're completely humbled by the experience because you don't know shit. You don't know how to through hike. You don't know how to resupply. You don't know how to hitch. You don't know anybody that you're around. You think I'm going to go have a adventure in the wilderness by myself and get out of society. And what you discover is something completely different, right? It's why people get addicted to through hiking, but addicted, like being a heroin addict, the first high is never the best, right? Like you're chasing the dragon. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me to be a hundred percent honest, and I've given a lot of thought to this, why I say kill through hiking is because after a while for me, cause I was doing so much of it all the time and then obviously making content about it all the time. And just, I, that's the only world I lived 
after a while, I wasn't really humbled by it anymore. Like when I went to go do a through hike, I'm like, oh, I know I can do this. Like I know how to resupply. I know how to do bigger mile days. I know how to do water cures. Like there's no, there's no real new experience about this. So I started becoming kind of burnt out from it. Um, CDT was really hard because of that. Cause I was just like, oh, like this is fun, but eh. So what, why I started doing so much international traveling is because what I've discovered is like by going to another country and just plopping myself down in the middle of nowhere where I'm a fly on the wall and nobody, like I don't know anybody, nobody knows me and it's a completely new experience. It's humbling. And I finally found like, oh my God, that's what I love. Like that is my biggest joy in life is like being humbled and learning something new. Like you asked me like, why do I do all this stuff? Like I'm, I'm restless. I like to learn new things and meet new people and have new experiences um, so that's really been my focus over last year. And then this year, I, you know, again, going to do tour de Mont Blanc, uh, not really for the hike more for like, I'm going to go hang out with 12 people I've never met before. And we're going to go have this cultural experience in this other country and stay in these little hostels and tea houses. Mm. And that's more what I'm looking for anymore. It's less about like the challenge of like, oh yeah, I can hike from, you know, nobody take this the wrong way. Oh, I can hike from Mexico to Canada. Like, well, okay. But like, that's not, I don't want the challenge anymore. I, I want to be humbled and I, I want to, I want to have new experiences. Uh, last year, I, like I said, I went to multiple different countries. I went to Nepal, um, totally on a whim. It was, I went to go do a bike tour of Great Britain. I rode from Land's End up to John O'Groats, uh, on a bike. And then I went straight from Scotland to Nepal, Kathmandu. I didn't know anything about it. The guy I was with has gone a couple of times. He's like, we should go to Nepal afterwards because it's cheap. And I was like, all right, <laughs> had some time to kill. Um, we go to Nepal, we land in Kathmandu and anyone that's ever been to that part of the world knows it's like totally culturally different. It's, I, I called it a multicultural orgasm was something I wrote in a <laughs> journal because like we stepped out of the airport into Kathmandu and it was instantly like, it was crazy. It was hectic. I didn't know anything. I couldn't understand anybody. And that feeling of hiking the AT for the first time, instantly it snapped back into me. And I was like, oh my God, I, this is totally new. I don't know anything about this. And it was so humbling and so amazing to have that experience again. So now, because I'm an addict, like <laughs> all of us, I'm addicted to that. I'm like, oh my God, I want more of that. Like, where can I go now? Uh, and like put my finger on a map. Hmm. Um, you know, if I can financially figure out how to do it, like I'm going to go. So yeah, a lot of travel this year, a lot of going to different countries, uh, planning a big bike trip right now, a bike packing trip. Um, I'll be doing some filming for it. I can't really disclose what I'm doing with it, but people will see with some people that we might have talked about. Um, going through Peru and Bolivia on a bike for 800 miles hmm. and going to different small cultures and, and experiencing them. So, so are you doing, I don't know how much of this you can disclose. Are you doing like mini series for your YouTube channel in terms of like turning them into like a travel series? Cause it sounds like that's, maybe the logical evolution is instead of through hiking. Damn, you're good. <laughs> if I was going to do a, like a big scavenger hunt and have a team, like a teammate for a big scavenger hunt, I think he'd put you on it. Yes. That's actually what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bullseye. Um, it's something I wanted to do for years. I, you know, again, it's funny. Like, uh, I ended up becoming known as like a hiking through hiking gear reviewing guy, but like my biggest inspiration from making media and like, sharing things and inspiring people was you know, growing up in Indiana. Like I had never been at it. I would never saw a mountain until I was 26 years old. Never went anywhere. Like grew up in cornfields, never went anywhere. But like the thing that inspired me to like want to start traveling and, and seeing the world and doing stuff like through hiking was always Anthony Bourdain. Like I was a mm. big Anthony Bourdain geek, yeah. massive. He's awesome. Um, I didn't have cable growing up. Uh, my mom raised me, but when I would see my dad every other weekend, I'd go stay at his house every other weekend. He had cable and I would sneak and stay up in the middle of the night and watch like a chef's tour or I would watch uh, No Reservations, those early shows that he did. And that's where I fell in love with traveling. So like that whole like, 
going to different cultures, trying different foods, uh, being humbled by travel and experience. It's kind of always been something that's been in my blood and something that like drives me creatively. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's kind of like what you said is, is actually kind of what I'm, I'm kind of gearing up towards and, and what I want to do going forward. Um, and not really being the, the backpacking gear aficionado through hiking guy anymore. I, I just kind of want to, why I started the whole like YouTube channel and all of this in the first place was I was like, Oh, I just want to share my experiences and hopefully inspire other people to go out and have that same experience mm-hmm. or, or, or find something in that. Like, you know, cause it changed my life. I've always just wanted to help change other people's lives. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's are kinda... you in front of the camera, behind the camera, both? Both. Could you hire someone to just run the camera operations, then you serve as the director? That would be amazing. Yeah. Any, anybody want to fund that? <laughs> uh, you can get a hold of me at <laughs> Darwin at oemedia.co. Yeah. I bet you're closer to that than you probably realize. I, I would love it. I, it. For years, like I actually got, when I was really hardcore doing the YouTube thing, I got pitched all kinds of like weird shows like that somebody wanted me to do a, like a survival show and not like naked and afraid. Cause now that's a common thing. I know a bunch yeah. of like through hikers yeah, and stuff totally that have been insane. on that. Yeah. But like, this was like back in 2017, I had some random production company being like, Oh, we'd love to talk to you about a show. We've seen your YouTube videos and we'd love for you to do a show on discovery. And I'm like, Oh yeah, maybe they're doing something about like long distance hiking and some sort of documentary. And they're like, you know, what kind of shelters can you build? And I was like, what do you mean? And like, you know, like what kind of, like, can you make, the house is out of sticks and i'm yeah. like no i usually just set up my tent what are you, what are you talking about <laughs> yeah so like can you can you make traps to snare animals and i'm like no <laughs> what the hell kind of show are you making yeah, yeah. <laughs> i walk into mcdonald's that are right off the pass yeah <laughs> so no but that that would be that would be cool but i think that uh me and a, a friend are, are working on it right now so it would be two of us would be going out to do this thing um but i think that we just want to keep it us kind of you know, I spent so many years documenting my through hikes and stuff of like not y- telling the story from my point of view, but also starting to tell the story from, you know, being behind the camera as well. Like if you watch the handful of CDT, sorry for everybody that I didn't finish my CDT videos, <laughs> but if you watch the handful of CDT videos I did make, I started kind of doing it then where there was some of this, right? Like where I'm talking to the camera, classic vlog style, but there was also a lot of like showing it from my perspective and doing narrative work, like a lot of voiceover and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So something in the same vein, um, but a little more about the people and the culture and the environment and less about like, look at this cool thing that I'm doing, hiking from point A to point B, because you know, I've done enough of that and there's enough people doing that. So yeah, that's the idea. That's awesome. I, you're clearly, very clearly, super passionate about this, and you've got all the skills to execute on it. So I'm sure it'll turn out an amazing product. And uh, yeah, we'll be excited to check it out when it happens. Thanks, man. Very appreciative of you making this happen at yeah. odd hours here at yeah. Trail Days with the uh, drum circle happening yeah. in the background out here. But yeah, I can't believe you guys are this close to. <laughs> I know. I, we didn't plan it this way. Did you guys way. hear that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think if we all hold our microphones, there is a lot some of some groovy some groovy <laughs> tunes going on out there. Very groovy jams. Uh, well, Darwin, nice to be able to make this one happen in person. Yeah, man. It's absolutely. Stoked on it. And, uh, Thanks for having Yeah. I hope the premiere goes great on Saturday. Saturday. And we'll definitely put out a link to the video once you have an idea of when and where it's going public. Yeah, that's all still to be determined. Sweet. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, man. Thank this you. This was a blast. To the Trek propaganda portion of the show, we should add the context that uh, we said guest before the interview with the person that you just heard because we don't know (laughs) which show we're attaching this to quite yet it was a really good episode it was a very good interview especially we had a lot of fun i especially like there was that one part in the middle Mm -hmm. i couldn't stop chuckles for days yep but yes thank you to guest (laughs) to the truck propaganda (laughs) portion of today's show uh this is the first time i'm actually going to feature a sponsored post and I'm, I'm not trying to give additional advertising, although the sponsor posts do help pay our bills. So thank you very much to REI. Uh, but this is actually a cool thing that I think the hiking market should know about. The title of this one is the REI Trailmade Collection, top picks from REI's new inclusive sizing technical line. Quick rundown on this, REI Trailmade, a new collection of gender and size inclusive gear and technical clothing. REI created the Trailmade line with input from BIPOC, 
LGBTQ plus and plus size industry leaders and co-op members. What came to light as a result of these collaborations, I'm just reading this from the article, by mm. the way, this is obviously not me, was that new hikers struggle most with finding the proper fit and also being intimidated by complicated products. With this input in mind, the collection was designed to provide flattering and comfortable fits and fabrics, minimize complicated features, and incorporate user-friendly designs that can be used by anyone, regardless of their size, body type, and skill level. The line also features gender-free sizing in products like the Trailmade sleeping bag, pad, trekking poles, and colorways that focus on gender-free expression in apparel. Um, and our reviewer here, Stacia Bennett, who's actually been a long-term writer for the track. It's been a minute since she's written anything, but stoked that she came back for this piece. She reviewed four pieces. They're shorts, their soft shell anorak, which is a rain jacket, fleece pants, and their 60 liter pack to get her take on these pieces or to check out the trail made collection in general, head to the link in the show notes. It would be funny if you did just come up with all of that. On my own, on the yeah, fly? Yeah. Just like that was just you talking. I think the listeners know that I don't have that capability. You read better than you usually read. Yeah, I think it's middle of the day. I'm, mm. I'm still operating at a... Uh, conversational level debatable based on how this episode started well <laughs> let's, let's get to it <laughs> stupidest thing of the week i was hemming and hawing i'm like what could i possibly do i do so many stupid things but i'm not able to pull anything and then you told me what my stupid thing yeah. was which is uh, i showed up to our recording today pulled out the goods from my backpack and realized that i forgot the only piece of equipment that was needed to make this operation happen yeah and you were very nonchalant about it too because you just stood there looked through your backpack and you said huh Forgot the recording equipment. I'll be back in 40 minutes. And you just turned around and walked back yeah. out. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing about this phase of my life is my it, everything's chaos all the time. That when something stressful happens, it's just, of course, like it's, it, I'm not more phased by it because I'm constantly phased. Yeah. I think that's acceptance. Yeah. 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 There's either a toddler trying to break something, a baby crying waking up at 2 a.m. there's poop somewhere that it's not supposed to be like that's happening all day every day yeah i see i'm not ex at acceptance yet i'm at minor rage yeah good not with you but like just with, in life like minor you inconveniences. mentioned yeah that you were uh battling the universe today no this week the oh. universe is against me this entire week um so stupidest thing of the week is not me it's the universe okay and this Fuck is you, this universe. is asking for more yeah. so when i when i call you you know, 10 minutes after I leave and you find out that I've flipped my car. Yeah. It's the universe paying me back for this segment. Sure. Um, so Monday morning, I go to work. And by go to work, I mean, like, I'm going to work at my desk. I'm just, like, going to do it. Uh, and I pull out my headphones that I used to work from. And the earpiece is just snapped off. Um, don't know how or why, but it is. And do you think Harper wanted you out of the house so she damaged your equipment? <laughs> she hasn't learned how to go through purses yet, so I don't think so. I think probably just stepped on it or something. I don't know. Um, but couldn't use it. And for some reason, the computer only works with like certain plug in ones. So I'm sitting there. I started super gluing it. I actually have it. I super glued it. Mm. It took hours. Super glue to... is a good thing to have on hand at all times. Yeah, but when you're gluing like plastic on plastic the way I was, it it took hours to dry especially mm. with the amount of glue i used sure um also nothing is more stressful than when super glue starts to come out of the tube but you yeah. squeeze the tube harder than you expected you would and it just keeps coming sure and you can't wipe it off because everything sticks polly stop it <laughs> 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 i didn't even know i was doing it at that time but anyway so they're like oh you could drive to the office in golden and pick up a new headset and i'm like okay i will do that so I drove to Golden, parked my car where they told me to park it in the parking lot, went inside to get my headset, went back out to my car, and just heard tss. Yeah, fuck that. While I'm about to get in my car, and I'm like, that doesn't sound good. And so I go and look at my back tire, and I guess they had nails in their parking lot because there was one in my car, and it was just deflating. So I drove to a tire shop. I got it patched. Um, I will say this is the first time in my life I've ever been charged for a tire patch. Usually <laughs> they just tell me, don't worry about it. It's Great. free. This time they charged me 20 bucks. Okay. Um, was this big O? 
no, I don't remember the name of it, but I think I would say it's because I'm not at my prime in COVID. I'm trying to think like maybe they never used to charge me because I look good. Um, maybe I just like looked a lot worse this time was my working theory. I can say that the I think the one time I've taken my tire in to be patched, I got it for free. And I know that uh, they weren't doing that based on my appearance. See, I thought these were favors this whole time. <laughs> I, I mean, like. Yeah, I think the lesson learned is that you're going to take your vehicle to the place that's doing it for free. Well, if someone thinks that someone's patching their tires for free um, because they're just like just slaying the day, yeah. I think let them think that because yeah. that those days I would leave those tire patches like what should be a bad mood. I'd be like, I am killing it today. <laughs> like I would leave with a little runner's high. Today's a good day. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I thought I looked this outfit was fine, but wow. Um, so, yeah that happened and then i got back home missed like half a day of work with all of this and then do you know how to change your tire yeah but the the question is should i have to right um <laughs> <laughs> of course you shouldn't <laughs> so yeah a little segment on me being spoiled <laughs> to come so then you should treat yourself to triple a yeah you have triple a no no um, so yesterday <laughs> I go to, I go to get home. This is the day after yeah. all is well yesterday. Um, Garrett's birthday, happy birthday to him. And I go to park my car after going out to get lunch. And there are five Xfinity vans parked in our lot with just cones in front of them, like just holding the spaces. And I'm like, this is bad. When there's five Xfinity vans, nothing good is coming. And the rest of the day went fine. And this morning, the vans were still there. And so I'm just like waiting, you know, like something is going to happen. Sure enough, my internet cut out in the 45th minute of a call that was going to close. Um, so that was not the best timing. And then it didn't come back on because they were doing stuff to every building um, and didn't think to warn anyone that that was about to happen. So my internet's not on. Yeah, what happens when there's a war and like the primary tactic is that they just go after our internet? I'm just gonna go hike a trail. Yeah. Just call me when it's done. It's amazing how dependent we are on this thing that you know didn't exist, or at least didn't exist in mass, like what, 15, 20 years ago? I'm just like, I put this on my list of grievances with my apartment complex because it is a long list, but I'm just baffled that being that these five vans were parked there for over 24 hours, they knew this was gonna happen. This yeah. was planned. Send us an email. Yeah. Hey, a lot of people work from home right now. So just a heads up, tomorrow at 11 a.m., we are going to cut everyone's internet. It happened on the dot. It was 11 a.m. on the dot. Yeah. Just let me know so I can plan ahead, go somewhere. And that stinks because in my circumstance, I could just go to Starbucks, but yours is very dependent on being on the phone. So you need a quiet space. Yeah. If I went to Starbucks, people would throw coffee at me, yeah. hot coffee at yeah. me. And the people on the receiving end of your calls would think that you're calling from some call center or something. It would yeah. Right away. And I don't want people like I don't even want people to hear me on a call with like a friend in a Starbucks. Yeah. You know, like to, hearing someone else's phone call is just uncomfortable. Yeah. I do get very self-conscious when I'm on the phone, especially like in a personal context like that in a public setting. I certainly sound like a very muted version of myself. Yeah. And like you are the asshole of Starbucks if yeah. you are sitting there placing calls in the middle of it like it's your private office. Were you, yeah. Do you remember the Nextel walkie-talkie things? This was... The phone that had the walkie-talkie yeah. on it? Yeah, I did. And it made like the little like... Yeah. And someone would be at the grocery store like, honey, do we have melons at home? <laughs> 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 like that was the worst thing of all time. I'm glad that didn't stick for longer than 20 minutes. Yeah, no, that's that's voice memo people now. Yeah. Do you have a voice memo person in your life where they just instead of sending a text, they send a voice recording? Oh. Um Viking does that from time to time. Fireball does that. Yeah. I'll get I'll get a text from like her that? and oh, I'm like then you have to play it in Yeah, a... they have to play it. Well, I get a text from her I'm like, "What's this?" and it's like a minute and a half recording. And I'm like, "Come on. <laughs> now I got to find a quiet spot." <laughs> yeah. Well, the alternative is what I do, which is voice to text, and we've seen how poorly that goes. Yeah, Mar well, I didn't realize Mara had them so easily accessible. She sent that screenshot of it within <laughs> seconds. This was the one from last year's show days, right? Yeah. So uh, I think we've talked about this on the podcast before, but 
the car that we rented, I was very excited because it came with Sirius XM. So I'd listen to Howard Stern whenever I could. And uh, I hit the voice memo. No, I did the voice to text button while Howard Stern was on. And it just spit out the craziest word salad gibberish bullshit of all time. Are you here, Zach, is what Mara said. Zach said, two minutes away, got gas first, and I'm closed the door by Kina. I know I'm not going to do it. Part of me wants to do it in her. Blake, get out, says her. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's honestly, that's pretty PG for a lot of the stuff that happens on a stern, but good. Yeah. Um, So that was stupidest thing of the week. (laughs) (laughs) That was quite the tangent. Let's do the triple crown of you might be a new hiker if... Is, it, is this supposed to be a play on the Jeff Foxworthy? I assume yes. No. you don't. The, the fact that you assume I even know who that is. You don't know who Jeff Foxworthy is? The Blue Collar Comedy Tour? Come on. Jeff Foxworthy had his own sitcom. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of his, but he is like... A, he's one of the early southern popular comedians and he has this entire shtick of you might be a redneck if and legitimately made a thousand jokes out of that and it's probably now worth like a billion dollars no i thought about this while going down a hill okay (laughs) same same (laughs) all right uh triple crown of you might be a new hiker if do you want to take the first one sure i thought of it while going down a hill because the thought i thought was when i was a new hiker I used to love the downhills. I used to be mm. like, I love a downhill. Downhills rock. I live for the downhills. It's a downhill day. I used to actually, I found out that an entire bottle of wine fits in a bottle of smart water. Um, the size is the same, but the bottle of wine has a sip left for you after you've transferred it over. So it's mm. like a little congrats from the wine to you. Sure. Um, so I would literally pack a smart water of wine out if i saw the upcoming week had a downhill day because i would just wait for the majority of the downhill and then crush a smart water a bottle of wine on the way into camp and get there just like vibing a full smart water bottle depends on how good i was feeling (laughs) but oftentimes it was just fun yeah like that was like you could have taken me to an amusement park the amount of fun i was having yep um now downhill days are very painful Mm. and i think i think that like your knees don't forget you know like they hold grudges and after you've been through a certain amount of trail miles your knees are a little mad at you and they never fully get over it and when you go to hike again you're good the first few days and then what starts to hurt more than the uphills which used to be the pain is the downhills like you just your knees are like hey I remember this. This was fucked up last time, and it's fucked up this time. And even if it doesn't feel as bad this time because it's such a short duration, you're out. I'm going to really throw a fit about it the whole time. And so they hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that's very relatable. I have been expecting the downhills to kill me with my old shitty knees, but I still haven't gotten to that place. I think I'm still in the new hiker knee phase. Not, I'm not trying to brag right now. I'm more so relaying my surprise because I feel like I, my body should be being tortured. But does it like does it fix it at all that you replaced one? So it's not a replacement. It's just the ACL got reconstructed, but I still have my actual joints in there. Huh. I'm not. Okay. bionic quite yet uh that will happen i'm sure as soon as they start to hurt but um segues nicely i'm listening to a book it's called outlive one of like the million books out there on longevity by a guy named peter atia he's a medical doctor and just like a really smart stats guy um and his entire shtick is he talks <laughs> about something called the centenarian olympics and he wants to be able to do I forget 10 things by the time he reaches 100 years it's more of a thought experiment he doesn't know if he's actually going to live to be 100 but he emphasizes how important it is to train eccentrically so it's like the negative so one of the things that he says that's really important because when one of the major causes of death and like injury that just lingers on in your 70s and 80s and like really just destroys the quality of your life is the fact that people fall and the falls are caused by the fact that they can't control themselves on something like stepping down so he says one of the best workouts you can do is just like really slow step downs like Mm. trying to make it 30 45 even 60 seconds per repetition and like training the eccentric 
muscles. Which Wait, per repetition, like you you go down a step so slow that it takes you 40 to 60 seconds to get down one step? I'm probably fudging the time a little bit, but I, he's, I think he's using a, a box as the example. And yeah, I think I think he said 30 seconds was the time that he said. Okay, so you're not saying go downstairs for 60 seconds. You you're probably, saying... if you didn't have access to a box, you probably could use stairs and maybe, you know, change the time to whatever is makes more sense but like really the point is really controlling your weight and like um having some resistance as you go down because when you think about training for a through hike the i think the easy thing to think of is just getting on like a stair stepper for 45 minutes and that's training all the climbing muscles this eccentric training is going to help you with the downhills and it'll like strengthen the knees and the stability and again if you're trying to live to be 100 will help you prevent major injury cool i don't know if there's a point there other than no, that's good info. A good book. My first thing is this is this is true of me on the AT thinking that you, so you might be a new hiker if you think that your pack weight doesn't matter. Mm. I went into the AT just being like I'm a young bull, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Um and I got away with it for a very long time. I mean I did most of the trail with a much heavier pack than I carry today, but once I upgraded to lighter gear and got rid of some of the redundant items and just stupid luxuries, uh, it's just so much more enjoyable. And I've certainly come around to the idea that weight definitely matters, and it matters a lot. Not to the extent of, um, you know, I'm not counting every gram. I'm not buying gear that is difficult to operate on all terrains. I'm not the guy who's like when we interviewed Skirka, we were talking about somebody who I forget what it was. They had just like the bristles of the toothbrush. Like it was past the point of sawing the toothbrush in half. And he was actually just like using only the bristles to brush his teeth. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. That sort of thing is um, far too on the UL spectrum for me, but yeah, pack weight matters. Cool. Number two, this one I see quite a bit. Anybody there? Leave a cell phone. Oop. Apparently I left my cell phone in the bathroom, so we have a new Jesus. addition. <laughs> Come on, Zach. <laughs> All right, I'll do my next one. Or I'll, I'll No, be- I got my next one. I'll go get it later. Uh so my next oh. one is if you carry a machete or an axe on a backpacking trip and you don't have any intentions of murdering somebody. Fair. So if you have <laughs> This is in poor taste. Well, so <laughs> if you're carrying an axe and you have the intention of murdering somebody, I don't think it necessarily indicates that you're a new hiker. It just means that you're an evil person. Yeah. Uh, you're a bad person. But yeah. I don't, you could be very competent at hiking and backpacking. Okay. Yeah. Because if someone thinks, someone who thinks they need it for survival. Yeah. Mostly yes. the people that think they need to like hack down a tree to build Bush a fire. Crafters. Yeah. And uh, typically you can achieve that just by getting wood off the down wood off the ground we should have a bushcrafter on the show sometime just to like ask yeah. them what they're thinking about yeah, certainly just in general okay my next one this is a spin off of caring about your own base weight so it's not caring about your own base weight it's a spin on it which is caring about other people's base weight. Mm. so you think that's a new hiker thing yes because when so when i started the pct there was a couple on the trail that had five pound base weights and I uh, like we could not believe it. Like we kept asking them about it and asking them about it. And then finally one time at camp, they agreed to take everything out of their pack and show us what they were carrying. And I can't think of a more boring use of time that is relaxation time on trail for either side of this equation. The person who has to actually unpack their pack for a stranger or the person who's sitting there like you know leaned over like locked in and focused like excited to find out like how you're making your base weight five pounds granted it doesn't mean you're a new hiker but I think at a certain point you stop to care so much about base weight in terms of not weight doesn't matter but being as light as possible for most people isn't the goal and when you stop caring about that you stop really idealizing other people that do that Mm. to the point that you're going to make them take out everything in their pack to show you it because you're just excited to see it yeah like i would never do that these days so you think the ul obsession is the mark of a new-ish hiker 
No, because I think there are some very um, advanced hikers who are UL and who are obsessed with gear, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think those people probably also wouldn't really care too much about what's in someone else's pack in terms of how much it weighs and yeah. what's getting it to that weight. So the evangelists are the ones who are the new hikers. Yes. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, it's a shame that people didn't get to see the awkward exchange that we just had. They did. <laughs> oh, is this going on the internet? Um, I, we're going to do some segment reels. Cool. We're going to test Maybe out that'll some stuff. be the one that goes on. <laughs> Maybe. Um, okay. Third one. I've got some honorable mentions here. Yeah. Um, God, Wait, are you choose. doing your third one or your honorable mention? My third one. Yeah. I'm just trying to pick right now. Okay. Okay. Third one Raise is... Raise by the way. What? On the floor by the door. Did someone just slide it under? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Neighbors. Um, okay, I'll just read them in order. My next one is, you're not that hungry when you get to town. Because if you're mm. if you're not having your hiker hunger yet, like if you're still fresh on the trail, yeah. you're not that hungry when you get to town. Sure. Or if you're just new to backpacking in general and don't have hiker hunger in general yet because you haven't done a longer trail, right. you probably don't even know what hiker hunger is. Yeah. And then you get back to town and maybe it's a day hike <laughs> and you just have a normal dinner. Maybe right. it's a weekend trip and you just like have a normal dinner. That is interesting because on my backpacking trips since the super long hikes... I don't feel that hungry when I get to town, whatever, if that's the end of a short hike or even just like a town trip on a short backpacking trip. But the muscle memory of just pigging out when you get to town is still there. So I still eat too much food just based on like, this is what I do now. Yeah. Um, so you have that trained. Yeah. Cool. I'm I agreeing with you. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't tell for a second, but I think you are. <laughs> I think you are too. <laughs> do you have any examples you want to give? What's the most recent pig out that you can recall? Um, oh, this should be easy. This is the Ozark Highlands Trail. Yeah. Yeah. Um, me and Mims, after we got back to the car, stopped in a town that we started calling heaven. This was not heaven. <laughs> we were calling it heaven. It had a pizza shop. We ordered a pie of pizza on the drive there in the gaps that we had reception in the car, um, picked it up, ate it while driving to the Airbnb, got to the Airbnb, ordered food from three different restaurants for pickup. It was like a Thai place, a Mexican place, and something else. Sonic. Um, and then we drove around town in a loop and picked up all our food and went home and watched a documentary on surfing while eating everything in sight. <clears throat> Easy answer. Yeah, documentary on surfing. It was called The Wave, I think. It was honestly really good. Uh. Surf videos are underrated. Should we get a professional surfer on the podcast? I don't know. Like... I don't want to offend them by only asking about sharks, but I don't know what else I'd ask about. <laughs> I'm sure we could fill an hour of that. If okay. We, if we could get Laird Hamilton. That if we can cool. find a professional surfer in a landlocked yeah. state, I'm all for it. Is anyone connected to Laird Hamilton? Uh, as you were saying. You were hey, is this heaven? No. It's Iowa. Yeah, that, that's exactly <laughs> how we felt. <laughs> Uh, I'm turning into a soundboard guy now. You are. You really do like <clears throat> your buttons. Yeah. Okay. Last one for me. Um, I'm just going to call this one back. You're carrying a boom box. Yeah. Or like a Bluetooth speaker of any Easy. kind. Yeah. I will continue to shame that it person. It clips onto your backpack with a carabiner. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're the least favorite of my type of hiker. So I'm going to keep This is not new. least favorite. This is new. Oh, oh, you're saying also. Got it. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, cool. Honorable mentions? This is a little too, like, leave no tracy, nah, 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 but true. You're you're just radically unprepared for the weather conditions. Like okay. this, this is the, I mean, this is worth stating because this is how people get in trouble, get lost, get thrown off trail, die, et cetera. But, like, you have to know the weather environment that you're heading into. Otherwise, yep. you're up for a bad time. I'll throw in my own little leave no tracy, nah, 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 which is you burn your trash. Yeah. <coughs> that's probably <coughs> one B for uh, people that annoy me next to the boom. Ooh, box another new, new, new. You don't pay attention to fire closures. So <laughs> you're making. Yeah, I like that segment. Rachel, if you could figure out how to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> um, people that, like, they're not making fires at camp because yeah. they're being dicks when there's a fire closure, yeah. but they just don't even know to check to see if there's a fire closure. Right. Like, they just assume we're outside, we can have a fire. Yeah. I think I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt and say most of the time that's ignorance. Like they're not 
breaking they're not intentionally breaking the law but they just don't know any better but maybe you're right maybe. that's new hiker material sure can't disagree with that uh that's, that's all i've got <laughs> oh i've got more okay you've never shit your pants duh mm. um you check for cell reception in a valley <clears throat> quick aside the number of people that apply to blog or apply to do anything we have somebody <laughs> helping at the trex booth who on their application says like my only downfall is i don't have a poop story <laughs> like this is something that's referenced all the time good yeah good that's it that's all it'll be referenced more coming up with yep. what we've got planned definitely um okay you check for cell reception in a valley like let's say you're hiking with sure. your phone on airplane <clears throat> mode if you get to anything but a peak and you're like i wonder if there's cell reception here that's a great one that's something that i've really honed in over the years of backpacking is just having a great sense for when cell service is available. I feel like I'm the cell tower. Like <laughs> I, I know when it's on before I even need to check. <clears throat> yeah. You can feel I just, the like, yeah, the cell... I get to the clearing. I'm almost like at the top of the peak and I'm looking around. I'm like, it feels like there's rays of yeah. cell reception coming at me. Yeah. I would say my prediction <laughs> abilities with cell service, I'm probably batting like 75%, which is pretty good. If you have line of sight and you can see a town, easy one. But sometimes you just get a feeling at some sort of a clearing. You're like, oh, yeah, I've got two bars of 5G here. Or you're like sitting at a river refilling your water and you go to check and you see that there's none and you look around you and you're like, who did I think I was? <laughs> like, why, why did I think this would happen for me? Who do you think you are? I am. Oh, we haven't done that one in a while. It's been a minute. Okay. Uh, and then my last honorable mention, this one is um, propaganda. You don't listen to backpacker radio. Yeah, fuck you guys. Probably a new hiker. Anyone who's not listening to this is my least favorite. A novice. <laughs> no, but that's not the category. Hey, but I also don't. <coughs> well, I had some things in my throat. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Turn into the frog lady all of a sudden. This is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, no. What? This is the universe. Oh, yeah. This week. Payback. I'm supposed to go to work and call people? What if I lose my voice? You can't show up to a bachelorette party without a voice, too, because then I you're cancel just going to be. I it all. Yeah. What are you doing? A strike to claim it. And he got it! Got it! Yes! That is right! I did it! That's another five! Are you kidding me? That's right! Who do you think you are? I am! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll never not be funny. Uh, unhinged. <clears throat> to the mailbag portion of today's show. We actually don't have an email, but even better, we have a voicemail. But mm -hmm. if you guys want to have your uh, love letters r read on air, that's podcast at the track.co. Here's a voicemail. Not going to read the URL because it's chaotic, but the link is in the show notes. And here is the voicemail. Hey, folks. Uh, my name is Jeff, and I'm going to give you a pitch on an episode that I really hope you do. And that is on a brand new trail under development called the Trans-Caucasian Trail, uh, TCT. So step aside, Catalina. Um, this is through Georgia, the country, uh, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. Um, and I think the people behind the trail are a bunch of uh, very interesting people that would make really good guests, I think, uh, discussing you know, what it takes to build a trail in general. Um, what it takes to work in, uh, you know, internationally with different communities uh, in a region that has lots of geopolitical, um, you know, complications um, would be really, really fascinating. And, and selfishly, I'm going to be attempting a through hike uh, of the trail this summer, and I would love if more people uh, would be able to find out about it and experience this thing because I think it's going to be really cool. So I hope it works out. Down. Yeah. Jeff, thanks for the voicemail. Definitely let us know how the hike goes. And if you're in Colorado, yeah. after it. It's tough to strike the balance between covering everything that is conceptually a trail versus the things that are actually have meaningful development because I can draw a line on a map and say this is the Zach Davis trail, but in reality, no work has gone into it and it's not necessarily worth shining a spotlight on. Um, not suggesting that's the case here, but we'll certainly have to do some more research to see if it's worthy. Hmm. Worthy is an interesting word. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of poop <laughs> stories to get through. So if you're going to cut through that noise, you got to be you got to be upper echelon. There you go. Five-star review. Five-star review. Not your typical listening demographic by Vicky's Mommy. Although we may not be your typical listening demographic, we are absolutely... that this. You take it. Okay. The tables have turned. People, I just can't do this to the listener. Yeah. 
Although we may not be your typical listening demographic, we are absolutely addicted to your podcast. You are our guilty pleasure. Just a group of scouting moms who love backpacking and hiking. We discovered your show about a year ago, and we all listen to your podcast while slaving away at our desk jobs, dreaming of our next adventure, and one day our own big hike. Your stories and guests have inspired us to section hike the AT starting this year. At Order of the Hikers, hashtag Order of the Hikers, hashtag The Mapleys. This sounds like a secret society. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, clever to plug your Instagram and whatever hashtags in your five-star review. Like I said, yeah. we'll read almost anything that you leave as a five-star review. Yeah. Certainly Instagram and social media stuff. I really want one that comes through that says, I want Zach to read this, please, followed by the biggest words in the dictionary, mm. incoherent sentences. Are you just ripping off Pardon My Take and how they shamed Hank and the fact that he can't read? Yeah. Good. I want chocolate milk to sponsor us. Cool. I, I just want chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. Do we have a sticker code? Uh, well, based on the episode with our guest, I would say our sticker code is potatoes. What do you think? <laughs> Now we're going to have to retroactively work potatoes into the interview with whoever it is. Who says we have to? Yeah. Um, I will say, let us know what your tell for a new hiker is. What your what for a new hiker? Tell. Uh, so they're basically their submission for our Triple Crown today. Oh, okay. Um, wouldn't they do that on the Triple Crown post where Mara asks them what Do we do that every week? Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> Do we do question of the day also? Yes, we do. Shit. <laughs> Welcome to our social media, yeah. Zach. Hey, I'm old. I don't do these things. Um, yeah, potatoes are fine. <laughs> <laughs> potatoes. potatoes. Are yeah, your favorite form of potato. Yeah. And you, you can't say me. Super big thank you to our Chuck Norris award winners on Patreon. Actually, let's get the updated list because we have, I think, at least one or two new people. Okay, you yeah. You say something interesting while um, I... This is Chaunce here. <laughs> <laughs> How's your Go day on. going, guys? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of trying to suss out what's going on with my voice right now. This is weird. Yeah, you're having it. It a didn't moment. happen before, and you guys heard me coughing in the background, which I hate doing on air. Um, but I think that was the moment it went away. Yeah. A li- at least a little bit. I'm gonna try to hack up a loogie when we press stop before the Patreon, so this doesn't go to no bra time. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm already off. Thank you to Alex and Misty with Navigators Crafting. Cool. Andrew, Austin McDaniel, Austin Ford, Brad and Blah Blah from 13 (laughs) Adventures, Brent Stenberg, Christopher Marshburn, Dane. Ish. Dogoodpantry.org, Greg McDaniel, Liz Seeger. Did we have you said Liz's name before? I don't think so. And also this is very different from the list on this one. So I'm... Yeah, you're. Did we lose people, or did we blind. just switch? I think I'm looking at an old one. Yeah, I don't know. It's confusing me. But I'm looking straight from the source, so this is right. Dane Ish, uh, Matt Sukup, Mike Poizel, Morgan Luke. I am your father. Patrick C. and Cialo, Sawyer Products. Their names all over the place here today. Love them. Uh, Timothy Han. I is a solo. Tracy Trigger. Fawns. Fawns. And Cameron Brown. Okay, so that's the one you skipped, and that's where I got confused. <laughs> So it looks like Patreon put that one at the bottom because it's a different currency. So apparently <laughs> it's xenophobic in the okay. fact that if you don't pay us in American dollars, USD, you get <laughs> cast at the back of the line. Cool. Uh, shout out to today's title sponsor, which is Sawyer Products. We love their stuff. We love them as a company. They're very good people. They donate 90% of the profits to clean water initiatives. We are obviously massive fans of their permethrin. Mm-hmm. You spray it on all of your stuff before any backpack pick, backpacking trip and serves as your shield against deer ticks and consequently Lyme disease, which is not a nice thing, especially if you listen to episode 200, you know all about that. And um, I personally love their picaridin, especially the spray, because if you have a dog and you're taking it out hiking, you can spray the picaridin on your dog. It's totally safe to do so. Um, and it helps them not get ticks. And obviously there's other ways you help your dog not get ticks. My voice is back. Yeah. But if you're at a trailhead, like I keep a can of their permethrin or their picaridin in my trunk. And when I get to a trailhead, I'll just spray her for like peace of mind, Mm. even though like, you know, there's other stuff you give dogs. It just, when you do it at the trailhead right before you go, you can get back and just be a little more comfortable in your car. I think you can also apply the permethrin directly to their skin, but important to note 
that definitely don't do that with cats because that's toxic. Why is it cats and not dogs? Why is it dogs and not cats? It's just another example of why dogs are way better. Um, are you looking up to see if you actually sp- spray Percaritin on your dog? Or yeah, because now you made me... I don't actually know about Percaritin. Um, I don't actually... The short answer is yes, is what... No, now it says the answer is no. Crap. Which one is it? <laughs> I have both in my car. That's the problem. Uh, Pecaritin is safe for dogs. The short answer is that yes, Pecaritin is safe and generally safer than DEET when used as directed. Here's why. Wait. Let's, let's get the real answer Should to we this. just call Travis? <laughs> hey, I know we already him. called you today. Uh, is Pecaritin... Okay. So Pecaritin problem- is safe for dogs. This is from rangerready.com. Probably should have gotten this straight from Travis. We'll ask him during. Well, it says it on the can. That's why mm-hmm. my brain's farting is because on the can it just tells me. So I just look at the can and I say, okay, I'm going to use this one. Yeah. Uh, so this says, though Picaridin appears to have a wide margin of safety when used on dogs, there are no products specifically licensed for use on dogs. So jury's out. Oh, okay. Um, Sawyer permethrin can be used on dogs, but is toxic around cats until it has dried. You were saying Picaridin, though. Yeah, uh, Sawyer permethrin can be used on dogs. Yeah, I'm on the... Well, I went to Sawyer's website because I wanted to get it straight from them. But you were saying Picaridin, right? I was. So, so mix you use permethrin. Yes. Okay. It says it on the bottle. What a confusing ad read this has been. This... I'm, I'm so sorry, Sawyer. <laughs> but hey, think about this. How long has this ad read been? Yeah, now... They are getting their money's worth here. Or not, but we're talking about them for sure. No, I spray I spray the dog one on my dog and it's great. And also per their website, permethrin can last up to 6 weeks on your dog depending on the hair type and length. Visit sawyer.com/dogs to learn more. I'm going there. .com/dogs. Yeah, but definitely don't spray your cat unless you're done having a cat. <laughs> 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 if you actually don't like cats and you found yourself stuck in a scenario where like maybe your significant other really wanted a cat. <laughs> yeah. So th- you have the knowledge of the balls in your court, guys, but you know our stance is don't spray cats. <laughs> you can follow us on social media. It's at Backpacker Radio on Instagram and TikTok at BackpackerPod on Twitter. Facebook.com slash Backpacker Radio. You can follow John. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Juliana underscore Johnson. <laughs> you can get my book on Keep Your Home Along as I can get on Amazon. Uh, Appalachian Trials and Pacific Crest Trials. And if you've read the books, please leave a review. Same. <clears throat> uh, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you consume podcasts. We have a YouTube page. Yes, There's going to be do. a lot of good video content coming through the pipeline. So be sure to subscribe. And when I say we, I mean Backpacker Radio, not the truck has had one for a while. Backpacker Radio has a new freshie and lots of good stuff coming through there. I've including the giggles ma- right now. Yeah, maybe we can include your um, – do you want to let people know what video project you were working on while I was – scrambling to get the recording equipment oh yeah um okay we're gonna give that to the whole internet okay um i we can <laughs> yeah we sure can i <laughs> sat in the corner of the studio and we have a bookcase that we put the books on when a guest brings us a book that they've written and i just picked out as many as i could get through while zach was gone um and i read the back cover and then i read the first page um I don't know if we could just put that on YouTube. I'm sure that's like copyright infringement of some sort. That's a long quote to quote. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're all pals because they were gifts. Do but you think they would sue us for all of the ad revenue of the 800 views that that video garnered? That would sure be a twist. <laughs> One of them's in the FBI, so I kind of don't want to fuck with True. her. True. Yeah, yeah. Sticks. Sticks, yes. Um, I don't know. I'm fine with that. You're getting sued, not me. Maybe, dibs, maybe we'll, on, dibs on not being liable. Yeah. Maybe we'll just do uh, Patreon instead in that way. Someone would have to be a lawyer and a patron. And a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> the, triple, the triple crown of ways to F us. Okay, that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for listening and happy hiking. Bye.